Thank you very much for your attendance because uh, speaking of psychoanalysis uh, can be a, a little bit, uh, it would seem to be outdated no? in a uh, Congress like this, but I, I believe it really isn't that way. And I'm glad uh, Siddhartha Ribeiro talked before me also because he spoke like in a good way of psychoanalysis so that opens a new or a better way of uh, talking about this the issues I want to present. I would like to say uh, that I also felt very comfortable in this conference because uh, when I was beginning my training as a psychiatrist in 1983, I had the opportunity to have a very strong and intense experience with LSD from the Sandos. It was a little bottle, two little bottles, in fact, from the Sandos making a total of 400 micrograms. Uh, and that experience really changed my way of, as, as many of you have perhaps experienced, of relating, recognizing, empathizing, uh, con connecting with people w which were having serious, serious suffering in, because of their mental situation. So, and some years later, I got in contact with ayahuasca while I was doing my psychoanalytic training. So having two different fields, psychoanalysis, which deals mainly with the mind, and I'm going to talk about the mind more than the brain now, and ayahuasca would, would open uh, another kind of experience, transformative experience, potential transformative experience, was something that, you know, it puzzled me for many years, perhaps in a way until now I was very young at that time and uh, trying to learn, really learn about psychoanalysis. So uh, uh, getting in contact with ayahuasca was like a strong challenge. Well, uh, this talk will address one uh, thing that always intrigued me a lot, which is why different people have different outcomes or different uh, um, effects after, during, or after an ayahuasca session. And uh, because perhaps you've also see, seen there are, there are some sort of side effects, like what Jung, not Freud, but Jung would call the inflation of the ego. It is people having one or two sessions that they finish the session and after one day or a second day, they are feeling just so strong, like they know everything, and they start having, for instance, pupils or disciples or followers, no? or people that have nothing, none, they have no visions, etc. Of course, there are some important brain issues related to this, but I would try to address this from a psychoanalytic point of view. Namely, especially through a concept, uh, which is a concept brought forward by the British psychoanalyst Winnicott in uh, the 60s, which is the concept of potential space. Well, of course, we think mind is mostly unconscious. No? we are mostly unconscious of, of ourselves. Consciousness is the lesser part of our mind, albeit also very important. We all have minds, but our minds are not the same. They may be similar, but not the same. They, each one of us, cope with the tensions, difficulties, emotions of daily living in different ways. Some experiences allow us to have a glimpse of our unconscious dreams, different slips, slip of the tongue, of the hands, of the memory. But to further develop the knowledge of our own unconscious, personal unconscious, perhaps transpersonal unconscious, we need further work, meditation, creative and reflexive activities, psychoanalysis, of course, and the use of sub substances may help. Mind, our mind, holds the thoughts and the emotions, but it can also expel them. 
very easily and without one knowing. It is very common to put tensions that we have in others' responsibilities areas. This is a projection or denial. And these are unconscious mechanisms. We are not aware of this. Okay. When the mind works in the strong projective modality as opposed to an elaborative modality, the capacity to think and understand weakens. The possibility of integration, and we've spoken about that, is strongly diminished. Perhaps we can still sustain the ability to think in logical terms, scientific terms including, but what is feeble, what is fragile, is the ability to, to empathize with others, to understand emotionally different situations, to hold new ideas, ideas that burn in a way. Because to think new thoughts, to be able to think new thoughts, one has to bear a certain kind of pain. Pleasure, perhaps bliss, may come afterwards, but not before. Our subjective conscious mind is not a mere reflection of how the world is, no, of course. We think through metaphors, we interpret reality, but this is not so obvious, in fact, because there is like a natural tendency based on evolutionary needs of feeling that what we think and what we see is real. If we, didn't, if we haven't thought about this before in evolution, we wouldn't be here. No? So accepting that what we see, feel, think may not be the truth implies an evolutionary uh, moment, stage. OK. Let's go to the point now of the potential space. So, mind may continue evolving. It, sometimes it doesn't happen. Many times it doesn't happen. What happens is that we have more information, but not a mental or self-evolution. If we want to continue evolving, we have to be able to tolerate contradictions incompletedness, uncertainties, at least for some time, for how long, until a new synthesis appears, until new insight comes, a new gestalt is formed. From a psychoanalytical point of view, this allows, it is this which allows the mind to evolve. And for, from a clinical perspective, it is during a real therapeutic experience a real therapeutic experience when it can better happen. In these moments, the mind of the patient and the mind of the analyst meet in a previously unknown point for both of them. It is not the analyst leading the patient somewhere. They meet in a previously unknown point. This allows both minds to expand, to evolve. But for this to happen, the analytic session, the work has to be oriented predominantly by eros and by the will of knowing and of healing, as opposed to the will of domination, trying to prove one theories to the patient, of compensation, of seduction, or of making money. Now, psychoanalysis implies a strong word and thinking about Stefan Bayer's words now, you cannot be a tourist in psychoanalysis either. So, knowing what is inside of us and what is outside, knowing and experiencing, there is a space between what is inside and what is outside. And this is what the British psychoanalyst called the potential space. This is a hypothetical area that exists, but may not exist, between the baby and the object. The object is the mother or part of the mother. During the phase of repudiation of the object as not me, that is, at the end of being merged with the mother. This occurs during the first year of life. This place, 
the potential space, space is not inside, nor is it outside. That is to say, it's not part of the repudiated world, the not me, that which the individual has decided to recognize with whatever difficulty and even pain as truly external, what is, what is outside the magical control. So this potential space is a space where w things are oneself and are not oneself. No? It's the intermediate area of experiencing that lies between fantasy and reality. This space allows for the gradual appearance of subjectivity. It appears in the mother-infant relationship, but later, one as a child and an adult can develop it naturally and autonomously. It is the space of the illusion, specific forms, the play space. Think to this mental space, we can play, we can create, we can make love, we can uh, dream. It is the area of the cultural experience, the area of creativity, of illusion, of intimacy. This space can be can have some problems. Not every one of us has the same quality, let's say, of potential space. It allows contradictions in the capacity to symbolize the emotional experience to create metaphors. It is a space from which the true self emerges. Now, in the beginning, there is no need for this transitional space because mother and infant are one single thing. Winnicott used to say, there is no such thing as a baby. It is a baby and the mother together. But then when the separation comes, it is very important that there appears a dialect, dialectic tension between three different entities or poles. These are the symbol what we think about a, per a perception, the symbolized is what we're being thought, what, what that which is being thought about, and the interpreting subject. One who is thinking, perceiving, evaluating. These three elements must appear, must be consistent, but many times one of them collapse. And there is a, let's skip this. They can uh, be, explain some of the phenomena of side effects I will talk now. The ayahuasca experience is, gives us a new, albeit in a strange way familiar, mental state. We can play with or be played by the emotions, perceptions, insights. During the ayahuasca experience, we were in the, in the ayahuasca hands, as we were in our mother's hands. Perhaps this can explain why so naturally we can think of ayahuasca as, in many places, as mother ayahuasca. However, the experience during the use of ayahuasca and after can, is varied and very personal. It will depend on the mental state of the person. So let me be now move very directly to the pathology of mental space as explained by Ogden, who is a psychoanalyst that works in the Bay Area. One of the possibilities that, is that reality is subsumed by fantasy. We'll go to detail that further. The other one is the reality is a, is a defense against fantasy. This is the collapsing of the psychological dialectics. Dissociation of reality and fantasy, foreclosure of reality and fantasy, and this is a point I've included here. So, Let's talk about this first reality subsumed by fantasy. What does that mean? And in many people, the 
inner perceptions. Let me explain it this way. To be able to doubt, to continue thinking about things, one must be able to feel that what one sees or thinks may be also expression of another thing. So we have to be able to continue metaphorizing. If this is collapsed, we are going to feel that what we see and think is real. So perhaps this could explain why in some circumstances people during an ayahuasca session take their inner perceptions, visions as real. Insights on inner power, developmental possibilities, and which should offer a new and transient ways of understanding are used to build a coherent and permanent theory. Ayahuasca is this, it opens this way, what you see means that. Intense experience, including visual or physical perceptions of good and bad infantile affects may be considered as good and bad external entities. I think this is something that can be polemic, especially in this area. I hope we have a chance to talk about this. The other point, defense, uh, reality as a defense against fantasy. This may account for avoiding any poten potentially transformative experiences. This is people that, for instance, work very well, do lots of money. For them, things are very clear, very ordered. They dream very little. They do not remember their dreams. They don't play. As children, they weren't taught to play. They didn't have the space to play, only to work and be very effective. No? So many of these people, are, have, if they participate if they are willing to participate, because most of them will not, because they would avoid to uh, be in any potentially transformative experience. Even psychoanalysis, of course. Well, they come to psychoanalysis when they're really suffering, you know, some, they, they were abandoned or, okay. Failure to have visions and insights, panic during the session, or a strong amnesia following the session the experience. Other possible side effects is the narcissistic grandiosity after one or two single experiences. No? This is the, the inflation of the ego. This is a, a very interesting concept also and I'm almost finished here. There has to be a difference be between insight and primary delusional experience. Insight, when one has a real insight, what the insight does is it destroys a theory, a personal theory. It changes our way of how we understood until that moment things. A primary delusional experience builds a theory. We have an experience, it is similar to an insight, but we come out with a very coherent, constructed, new theory about what things are. This is, from my point of view, of course, a problem. It can be very seductive, but it is a problem because it stops thinking to evolve. extreme distress during the session. Thank God there are good shamans, people who can tolerate by their chants or singing or attitude, help to... Incapacity to bear the emergency of repressed, forgotten experience. I remember once a friend who had one experience of ayahuasca with somebody he knew and came to me very shocked because uh, he had seen an image, an infantile image of his mother and another man that had been, he, he wanted me to tell him if the visions were true or not. What I did was send him to therapy to work his capacity to tolerate these kinds of things that may happen, huh, of course. 
And to finish, no? can ayahuasca modify or help modify the potential space? Of course, I think yes. No? When it is a new, because it can be a new and nurturing experience. If potential space helps us to develop ourself, our true self, ayahuasca may work in that same way, helping us to discover what could be called, I won't enter in that, a true higher self. But only with further work. Further, by further work, I mean therapy, um, true dialogues with other people, perhaps other experiences, continue thinking, continue moving. Further work is what we all do. But I am sure also that this further work is for all of us a beautiful road to continue traveling. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Eduardo. Um, because we're running a little bit late, we're gonna still have the 10 minutes of questions, but that's gonna run into the break time. Just so you know, the next talk will still begin at 11. Um, so I'd like to invite people who would like to ask a question to please uh, come to the microphone. And um, I'd also like to remind people again that if you are gonna receive continuing education credits, that you can do that out of the table outside. That has to be done before 7 p.m. today. So first question. Yes, hi. Um, there seems to be a tension between your perspective and the indigenous perspective and the cosmology from which ayahuasca use stems from, which takes spiritual entities as literally existing, whereas yours is a more modern psychoanalytic perspective. How do you negotiate that tension? Uh, uh, I tolerate the contradiction within myself. I choose one way of working with my patients, and when I work with this, which is the, the way I've uh, explained here, and when I go to the Amazon and have uh, or talks or, or an ayahuasca session, I, I'm open to play with that other kind of way of thinking and of relating, which I, uh, it is me, perhaps other for other people it is different, but for me, I, I, I haven't considered as real entities. But um, uh, I feel that experience helps me a lot also. Um, in Freudian theory, dreams are often seen as symbols uh, that need decoding. So there's meaning prior to understanding, um, as far as I understand psycho psychoanalytic theory. Um, as far as I understand psychoanalytic theory, and I was wondering if, would you say the same thing applies to the ayahuasca experience? There's meaning prior to understanding embedded in the symbolism in the ayahuasca experience, or are there any experiences that might come up where meaning needs to be constructed to move on and uh, progress through your own therapy? Um. The true meaning of a symbol, of an image, of a dream, is the meaning that strikes us. When it strikes us, it opens a new way of understanding what we were living. That is the true meaning, in true in that terms. So sometimes you, you may have the experience of having a vision that suddenly organizes many of the things you were working with uh, before. That can be spontaneous. In an analytical setting, the work of the dream is done very much related with the couple that is working. Many of the interpretations have to do with the dyadic relationship that establishes between uh, patient and analysts. There are some differences. I think I haven't uh, responded to all of your questions, but we can talk afterwards. Huh? Hello. Hi. Sorry. I appreciate very much the thrust of your paper to bring um, this uh, medicinal work into psychoanalytic uh, perspectives. I'm wondering, it may be different working in Peru than it is in America. I'm wondering if you've met any resistance from your uh, psychoanalytic community, from the International Psychoanalytic Association, what their response 
is to these new ways of uh, working. Uh, psychoanalysis has a, a, a corpus no, of knowledge and is very like strong and not very easily open to new perspectives. But uh, the Peruvian psychoanalytic society has been you know, very toler tolerating uh, with these ideas and uh, many of our, the oldest psychoanalysts in Lima have had uh, or ayahuasca or LSD experiences when they were training as psychiatrists. So perhaps they forgot some about that, but they can still, well, we can still remember them of that. I have sort of a two-part question. Um, the, the first is, I, I noticed a lot of the negative side effects had, well, or basically, I, I was really interested in the part that you were talking about uh, ayahuasca being the mother. Yeah. And, and I thought maybe you were leaning towards that ayahuasca experience might be a way to heal some of the pre-egoic, like zero to five years old wounding that someone might have experienced. But I also was wondering if you find that pre-egoic wounding, like somebody with a personality disorder or something, yes. that's an indication, like it's counterindicated to do ayahuasca sessions. And I was wondering if you found that to be true or if you do work with people with personality disorders or something like that. Yes. L let me see if I understood. I believe the ayahuasca experience resembles in many ways, and in that sense it allows people to evolve, resembles the first year of life in, in many ways. It's not only that, of course. So it can help some people. But there are also people who have structured, uh, let's say, pathological traits that I, I believe uh, ayahuasca won't be uh, enough, not even desirable. Because it is like they do not have a mind that can hold the experience during or after the experience it may just uh, crumble or, or fall apart or uh, not really help. No, that is my, my impression, my, my experience. Okay, and so do you try to sort that out before you do ayahuasca sessions with someone? Um, I do not do ayahuasca sessions. Oh, okay. uh, I do not, as an analyst, I do not suggest the patients to have uh, ah. ayahuasca sessions, but some of them, because of something they've heard, I talked or wrote or, or uh, it comes spontaneously, a uh, desire of having ayahuasca, so then I can listen with another ear and attention and perhaps move a little bit from the sort of uh, neutral analytic point of view and enter more th in that. When they have sessions, we can have, during a time, very interesting discussions of that. Um, awesome, thank you. Thank you. I wanted to ask. Um, I wanted to ask about the I, <clears throat> ayahuasca experience. I I have found in the, uh, after the Santa Daimi um, session, the work is over, that people are very willing to work with the inner child the way Alice Miller talked about, um, and they progress rapidly. Um, uh, just seen some amazing things happen with people that I work with, but this is within the context of the ceremony after the ceremony is over and I'm wondering would that have would that sound to you to be a reasonable expectation that there would be an opening of this potential space? Yes, uh, I think that is a reasonable expectation. Uh, I've chosen to continue working as an analyst in my office and with the patients that enter and go, etc., and work over. But uh, every once in a while, when I go again to the Amazon and have another experience, uh, working as you suggest with the uh, images and emotions that open uh, is, uh, I think it works very well. It is like recovering a new, like making new, remembering how it, how it was this absolutely new contact with our inner self when we were discovering how to play, how to think, how to feel, yes. Thank you.